Usually when a crisis, particularly a disaster happens, the people who are responsible for, for firstly saving lives, uh, but also protecting assets uh, are women. So that is the big challenge in front of us, but it's a huge opportunity. And I think that presents a challenge particularly for the civilian capability, but also the military capability as well. And the focus is so much on protecting women as opposed to what we've been striving for over a longer period of time even is empowering women to protect themselves, empowering women to make them part of the mediations and the negotiations so that they're at the table and they have a stake and they have a voice. If you start with the issue of, of gender, there are certain issues that, that need to be front and foremost as far as what impact does this situation have on women? Uh, how vulnerable are women in this, in this crisis? What capabilities do women have uh, to respond to the crisis? How are women's voices uh, being heard in, in the response to crisis? And what do we need to do to make that happen? I feel that people are asking, that leaders are asking those questions in their engagements, whether it's be with governments or international NGOs, you start to get the conversation. Very often, certainly in situations of armed conflict, it's the women that hold everything together while the men are away fighting. We need to really recognise the strength and build on that, but not to the exclusion of the experience of men and boys. So we know sexual violence occurs in armed conflict, predominantly with women and girls, but also with men and boys. And so we need to be very careful when we're thinking about women separately, to think about it as a part of a picture, a big part of a picture, but not the only part of the picture. How do people who had no power uh, when our program started have power now? Uh, how do they have power to actually engage in processes, to negotiate, to bargain? How do they have power with each other to be able to mobilise groups of people around common issues, women's groups mobilising around common issues? And how are they able to actually have the power to influence the agenda in that community, in that district, in that country? I think those sorts of questions to me are quite pivotal. They're not often asked. So there's a lot more focus now on trying as much as we can to procure locally, trying to support, for example, women's businesses on the ground to give them some capacity development or just give them some business to get going. So seeing that as part of the national ownership and the sustainability of what we leave behind after we go is really important too. I think we need to get a lot better at building resilience, particularly women's resilience on the ground to disasters, so that there are action plans developed by women, that they're able to enact when a disaster happens.